All right, guys, today we've got a real special one for you. Today we've got the Lisa X final unboxing. We're gonna take this thing out of the box, show you what the whole experience is like, set it up, and get it ready for the first print. So the first thing's first, you're gonna unstrap this. This came wrapped with straps over it. But the first thing you really gotta do is take the flight case apart. Go Strap ahead and wrap. grab that side. So it's really nice flight case they include with this. This has literally enables you to move it around to any facility, from facility to facility, deep storage. If you want to fly it out to a, a client, a, a new location, it comes with this box, which is really, really nice. The next thing I absolutely love this, they have included a ramp. I'm going to unvelcro that. This little stand comes out just like that. And you literally put it down and we're going to roll it right out. But first, we're going to position it for the best possible rollout. So the first box you get here is the dedicated powder tools. In here, very simple. You get some stuff to work with powder, sifting, scooping. We're going to have a whole video on what is all included, but you get a lot of different accessories for working with the powder. You also get this, which is your filling pail. So this comes with this funnel and this is actually what's used to fill up the machine with powder. And then of course, as any good machine, you get a binder for the manuals. So you can put all your different manuals. If you're getting the Multi-PHS with the Lisa X Performance Set and the Sandblaster and the vacuum and all the other tools, you can keep all the manuals in a case. But we'll get on that later. Cole's gonna show you. So we'll get that out of the way. Next, it comes with the IO box. The IO box is the box that's used to take the powder cakes in and out of the actual printer. So unlike the fuse where it has capsules that you take in and out of the printer, you take the actual cake out of the printer. Now the funny thing about the capsules is it looks like a huge workflow improvement. The thing is you still have to let the powder cool before you can take anything out of the capsule. So it's kind of a, a trade-off. If you wanna really consider the difference between the fuse and the sinterit, then definitely give us a call, shoot us an email, or watch some of our other video comparisons telling you why you might want one or the other. But for us, the best systems are the SLS from Sinterit because of the open system and all this other jazz. So let's get into it. We've got the accessory for the Flexa Performance material. These are gonna be parts that you install specifically when you're doing flexible materials. Hmm. And then of course, the I.O. box, which is this large thing that you actually take the cake out with. Now, if you're in the USA, you're wondering, can this plug into my standard 110 volts? And the answer is yes, because in the US, every machine, they are 240 volt or 220 volt, but they come with the transformer. So if you do not have 220 volt connections in your shop, it's okay, you're covered. It comes with a super powerful converter box that allows you to plug it in in any building, any situation. So if you're at a garage or an old university building or just your shop and you're out of 240s, you're good to go. Let's get this puppy out. So, we got the power cable in the bottom. I'm gonna unlock it. It comes with a nice unpackaging. Oh, good. All right, let's check this out. Let's see, so cut, box, undo clips, take side off, put the thing down. Roll it out. It's not locked. And then break the wheels. That's it. That's all you got. Nice. And then plug it in. That's it's like an Apple product. Handle, right handle, handle. All right, they're jumping in. I'm excited. Oh, it's huge. Yeah. Wow. That's way bigger. Which we knew, but I didn't expect it to be that much bigger. We've got the Lisa X and the Lisa Pro. Just so you know the difference, while well, we got them both sitting right here. Lisa Pro, smaller more compact, it's got the laser gantry system. This puppy has the laser galvo system, so it does full bill volumes in 20 to 24 hours. Really big advantage, especially for production or even prototyping. You can have your part the next day. Oh, uh, it's gonna need power to open, but I wanna see a side-by-side. -side. Tilting year. screen? Tilting screen. Wow. Just nice little finishing touches, like color matched grills and whatnot. Um, much nicer screen. Look how beautiful that hinges just for the screen itself. That's really nice. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, it comes out flat. Overall, it comes all the way up. Overall finish quality is really nice. It's literally as easy as rolling it off of the pallet and then plugging it in, twisting the button to turn it on. Let's do it. What I thought I'd say is we're gonna go ahead and use the step-up converter because that's what most people will be using, but we do have 220. If you do have 220, go ahead and use it. More power is less amperage, which is faster heat up, which is good for this machine. But we're gonna be getting it the way 90% of the customers are probably gonna be getting it and using this step-up voltage converter. Plugged in, the next step, power on. All right. Look, at how, uh, look how nice that graphic is. Oh, was. that's beautiful. Yeah, finish quality is really nice. So this button should be pressed in when you receive it. And so you hit that and it turns off, but if you want to turn it on, there we go. I don't know. Yep, there we go. There we go, boot up. So the nice thing about an SLS system is literally taking it out of the box, giving it power and you're ready to go. There's not long, tedious calibration sequences. It really is a production ready machine. So take it out of the box, do your research on, you know, what material you want to use and everything, but fill it like it says to fill it and start manufacturing. It just is as simple as that, really. It takes yeah. care of everything for you. It's much more hands off than FDM. Have the thing print an entire build, build volume, go home, and the next day you'll have 50 of a part instead of what fits on a build plate. But you probably already knew that if you're watching this. Let's go through the startup screens. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do here is given the option to set up or skip onboarding, we know what we're doing because I don't read manual, so we're just gonna skip onboarding and get to it. <laughs> no, we're gonna click next. Check how easily you can adjust the position, we did that, of the screen. This step is optional. Oh, the inert gas connection. As you can see right behind you, we've got our nitrogen generators. Now, this is something that took us a while to find the perfect solution for, but we finally have it and they're available, ready to ship now. This is a nitrogen generator. There are no electronic components. It's all based on compressed air. So you just need compressed air to feed to this and it will generate the proper amount of nitrogen that you need for the Lisa X and I believe the Nils as well. But we've got these puppies ready to go and that lets you do the PA11 Onyx. ESD and carbon fiber, which is the one we're about to dive right into. So stay tuned, hit subscribe, like this video if you like it, and we'll get into the carbon fiber PA11 very soon. Back to the machine. So for now, we're just gonna leave inert gas off because we'll set that up next, you know? Yeah. So open the lid, unlock lid button. I can't, this is what I want. I wanna see inside. All right. They'll see this Did video. you just lock it again? Or? No, I pushed it down. Oh, like it said. And then I should have grabbed the handle, but you pull it up. Ooh, we got more stuff inside. Nicely packaged stuff. Very nicely packaged stuff. Now we've got the Lisa X manual, which as I mentioned previously, we've got this handy dander binder for. So we're gonna go ahead and open that up and handy slip dander. that puppy right in there. So we keep all our manuals in one place. Depending what accessories and everything else you buy, you'll have a bunch of these different manuals. And we also have PDFs available on the website. So check out visionminer.com slash Centurit for all that stuff. That's nice. They give you a lot of extra bulbs. Oh, and oh yeah, this is like a whole main. What kit. I assume would be. These the are recorder cords. Recorder, yeah. Yeah. You get a ton of them. That's enough to last you a long time. Yeah, which it's is like, nice. was it every 200 to 400 hours, I believe? We'll put the right number on screen here. Uh, every so often you do replace the recoder cord, just to make sure everything's tight and right. So they include a bunch of spares so that you'll be printing for a long time with just these supplies. Next, you have the laser protective glass. Now we're gonna have to install it before we do a print, but this is the glass that the laser shines through. It's a very, very special glass. It's very, very special. It comes with a Wi-Fi antenna. Oh, we oh there we go. Set that up too to break it down. These bulbs are heat bulbs. They keep the top layer of the powder hot. So it's near its melting temperature. So that when you hit it with a laser, it requires less laser powder and goes faster and you get a better end product. Within the actual chamber itself, this is the powder filling bed and this is the actual print bed. So this is actually gonna go down based on the slice. It's gonna go down just far enough for enough powder for whatever the parts you sliced are. 
whatever the build volume is. And then it's going to use the recoder and push over powder gradually as this moves up into the build chamber, which is this thing right here. So we've got the print chamber contains the box, the laser protective glass, and the user manual. Next, laser protective glass, find it, startup box, wow. cool. Let's hit next. Insert the antenna connector. For the Wi-Fi antenna, it's literally plug and play. You're just gonna go right here and just twist it on. So if I connect to Wi-Fi, it's gonna give me a list of Wi-Fi's. Right click Vision Miner, connect, and then we're gonna blur this out. All right, so we're connected, done. During transportation, it's likely that a small amount of residual powder from the calibration process might be dislodged from the sealing areas of the print and feed bed. This is seen as normal and not unexpected, nor does it in any way compromise the setup and operation of the printer. So down there, there may be some stuff. Okay, if you plan Looks on like using the PHS, off. please toggle the button below. Now, we're gonna get the new multi-PHS. Right now, we have the original PHS, but that's already sold and going to a customer. So, when we get the new one in, we'll show that whole process, connecting the Lisa X to the powder handling station, especially the new multi-PHS, because this whole system is industry 4.0. So that means you have APIs and you can connect it to the rest of your manufacturing process very simply and easily. So this actually connects to the PHS. It's a very cool system, but we'll get into that later. What's an API? An API. And what's, what, what is business 4.0? What if I'm still on business 2.0? You'll be fine. It works with that too. It seamlessly upscales. Industry 4.0. That's synergy. Is yeah. It's like <laughs> it's like a way of gathering all the different data points from your printer. So whether you're an FDM printer, an SLS printer, SLA printer, the times, the stats, the the temperatures, it logs everything, and it basically gives you a data stream like old RSS feeds. The API allows you to connect whatever software system you have to this software system with a set of predefined parameters. That's so, a real thing, it's a real standard. An API, yeah. No, it, it, Industry 4.0. Yeah, no, it's the, yeah, it's a thing. Oh, whoa. We're gonna skip the powder handling station for now and hit next. And then printing, settings, maintenance, and camera view. This is the main controller. Rob, do you need a powder handling station? Is it a requirement of this machine? It's not a requirement of this machine, but it's just highly recommended. I would agree, having done both. Yeah, yeah. Basically, if you don't have a setup like this, you're gonna be using a box or some sort of thing and pouring out your, your powder cake into that and getting your parts out. And it's just gonna get really, really messy. Messy then you is have, the main part, yeah. Right. And then you have to take all that powder and put it into the powder sieve, which they do have just a separate powder sieve and it's very affordable. So that's definitely an option, especially for the Lisa or Lisa Pro. You don't need a powder handling station, but if you're in production or if you wanna keep things clean or you wanna, you know, depowder and process a whole bunch of parts, then the powder handling station has a depowdering area where you put your cake and you get all your parts and you use all, all your tools to get the parts out. And then it takes all that extra powder and takes it down through the powder seat. <laughs> While it's sifting all your material and refreshing it for reuse, then you bring your parts into the sandblaster and you use the sandblasting gun to blast your parts and in increase or improve the finish and make them fully depowdered. So you don't need one, but it's it streamlines your process massively. Massively. So do it if you can. To make your printing process more effective, use Cinerate software. If you have questions, please contact your Cinerate support team. That's a really important part to note as when you buy this from Vision Miner, you're buying it from us, you're buying it from our team, and all of our guys are in here using this stuff every day. We have a print farm going, we're using all the equipment we sell, 3D scanners, 3D printers, FDM, SLS, and more. So if you're a business and you're getting into this stuff and you need advice or consulting on which machines you should get, what's right for your product, that's what we're here to do. We're here to help you figure out what the right technology is and then help you actually use it to produce the best possible part. So give us a call, shoot us an email, we're here to help. So now we can uh, choose our current material. When you slice something in the slicer and load the file in here, you can add the print job as whatever. So all this stuff is gonna be taken care of when we show you the first print on the Lisa X and we'll dive deep into the actual user interface and all the different features of the machine. So be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more videos as time goes on. 
We're gonna have a lot of content on this machine. I'm super stoked for it, mainly because it'll do full build volumes in 24 hours versus the Pro where we see, we saw anywhere from three days to 12 days just to get one build out. Now we're gonna hit print and we're gonna get it out the next day. Be prepared, lots of new content coming. Cole, you've got a big hand in this next uh, line of videos coming up. You got any special plans for this machine? Well, first thing I want to address is, follow me, come over here. Look at how the quality of the wiring, of this wiring room. That laser means business up there. But just how nice this wiring loom is, the overall finish quality of this machine is exceptional. Um, everything from going from the Pro to this, not only is the machine bigger, but everything seems to be upsized, it, it, higher quality components by a considerable amount. And that's not to say that the, the Pro was of low quality at all. You, you can feel and see the quality in this machine. Um, so if you're upgrading from the X, you will, to, to the X, you will not be disappointed. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned in our next video. We're gonna show you how to start your first print and we're also gonna show you how to install the laser glass, a little bit of software stuff here and there. And then of course, depowdering those parts on the machine. So stay tuned. Again, thank you for watching. Hit the like and subscribe if you wanna see more stuff like this. If you got any comments down below, let us know what you want us to see, what you want us to print. We're here to do that for you guys and demystify all this high-end equipment. We sell 3D scanners, we sell 3D printers, FDM, SLS, we sell 3D printer materials, primarily in Peak and Ultim. We even have a print service because our bread and butter is high temp functional materials like Peak, Ultim, PPSU, PPS, CFPPS, and all of the above. So give us a call, shoot us an email. We're here to help you with your business to save time, make more money. Anyway, have a positive rest of your day. We'll see you on the next one.